Okay, review number two, factoring review. So we're going to recall multiplying polynomials. So FOIL is an acronym that tells us how to multiply binomials together. Okay, so this is binomials. These are uh, two terms. So say like 4x plus 2, for example. Okay, we have the 4x, we have the 2. That's a binomial. So F stands for first. So what you do, so, and we'll just apply it directly here. So if we have a plus B, which is just a term plus a term, and then that's times C plus D, which is a term plus a term. What we're doing is we're multiplying the first terms. So we would multiply A, which is the first term in the uh, first bracket, and then the C, which is the first term in that second bracket. And that's where we get A plus C from. Okay, O, we multiply the outside terms. So a and B, the A is on the outside, and then C and D, the D is on the outside, right? So A times D, that's where we get O from. Then multiply the inside terms. So inside are going to be these two terms here, B times C. And then um, L is like the leftover, the last terms. So a and B, B is the last term in this bracket, D is the last term in this bracket, we have B times D, okay? I personally, I call it foiling, but I do like this as a rainbow method, so I like to see this visual, so A times C, A times D, B times C, B times D, like that, okay? But I'll say foil. Okay, multiplying monomials, what we do, and we saw this in um, the review of lesson one we multiply the numerical coefficients okay so the coefficients are multiplied and then we multiply the variable let's just call this variables okay okay and now we're going to um, recall exponent laws and then we're going to do a couple examples okay so first of all the product law for exponents what we do is if we have two terms of the same base so the base here is x and the base here is x what we can do is we can actually add the exponents and just keep the base so x to the a plus b i'm going to explain quickly why if we had x squared and then times x to the three when we expand this x squared is xx and then x to the 3 is x, x, x. Okay, so essentially there are five of them here, which is 2 plus 3. Okay, and just as a review, this is called expanded form. Now, quotient law, when we divide two numbers that have the same base, so here the base is x and the base is x, what we do is we actually subtract the exponents. You always have to subtract the top one or the first one minus the bottom one. Don't get into the habit of subtracting the bigger number minus the littler number because that's not how it works. Okay, so I'm going to do an example, x to the 4 over x to the 2. Okay, actually I'm going to do x to the 3. So x to the 4 would be expanded, x, 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 all multiplied. x to the 3 would be expanded three times. And what happens here is these cancel, and we're left with x to the 1. In other words, 4 minus 3 would be 1, x to the 1. Okay, factoring. So factoring and expanding are opposites of one another. So factoring pol a polynomial is the opposite of expanding a polynomial. Factoring is the process of writing a polynomial as the product of two or more polynomials. So, for example, if we had x times x plus 2, oh, here we go, okay, we would expand this which is going this way, into x squared plus 2x. If we had x squared plus 2x, we could factor it into x bracket x plus 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's expand and simplify the following. So again, I would call this foiling. So what's x times x is x squared. 
x times negative 3 is negative 3x. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And always we want to simplify our answers. So negative 3x plus 2x is negative x. And we're left with x squared minus x minus 6. Okay, let's FOIL the next one. 2x times 3x. So we would do 2 times 3, which is 6, and then x times x, which is x squared. Okay, 2x times negative 4, I get negative 8x. 5 times 3 is 15x, and then 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. Okay, and then we want to go ahead and add these like terms. So we get negative 8x plus 15x, I get plus 7x minus 20. Okay, and then the 6x squared I just brought down and the negative 20 I just brought down. So we're left with 6x squared plus 7x minus 20. Okay, and see, we're multiplying three things, 2x, x plus 1, and x minus 4. What we're going to do is we're just going to bring down this 2x. And we're going to go ahead and expand these two brackets, and we're just going to put them in one bracket, okay? The rule is expand two at a time. x times x is x squared minus 4x plus x minus 4, okay? Let's go ahead and collect these like terms. So we get 2x on the outside. This just comes down. We get x squared. Negative 4x plus x is negative 3x, and then just bring down that negative 4. Okay, now let's distribute the 2x into this bracket, and remember it goes on to every single term. So 2x times x squared is 2x cubed, and remember x to the 1 times x to the 2, you add these two exponents. 2x times negative 3x, I get negative 6x squared, and 2x times negative 4, I get negative 8x. Okay, now let's move on to common factoring. So first what we want to do is we want to find the greatest common factor. And what that is, is the, like the largest number and or variable that divides evenly into every single term in that polynomial. Okay, so to common factor, first we want to find the greatest common factor. Then what we do is we just divide each term by that greatest common factor. And that's going to allow us to find that second factor. And then what we can do is we can rewrite it as the greatest common factor times, and then in bracket, whatever the second factor is. Okay. Now, you can always, this is not necessary, but you can always check your answer by expanding. So if ever on a test or an assignment, you want to just double check, you can always uh, like go to the side of your paper, expand it, and then just check that you come up with the same the same thing, okay? Because when we go through expansion or factoring, like back and forth, what we're doing is we're trying to ensure that each line is equivalent, okay? So, greatest common factor, six and three, okay? Just as a re recap, we would we could go to the side of our paper and go, you know, six, 12, 18, and then three, six, nine, 12, Okay, so the greatest common factor would be you know what? I was doing multiple multiples. Sorry, factors of six, one and six, two and three. Factors of three, one and three. Okay, so the greatest common factor is this three. Okay. Now here's the rule n cubed and n to the 1, what we do is we take, so here on the side of your paper, um, for variables, we take the smaller ex exponent, okay, so what's smaller, uh, 3 or 1? Well, one is, so 3n. So what we're doing is we're going to divide this term by 3n, 3n, and we're going to divide the second term by 3n as well. 
Let's move this down. Okay, so we write just like this, the greatest common factor in front. We open up a bracket and then we cancel out. Six divided by three is two n cubed divided by n to the one is n squared. And then these completely cancel out. We don't write zero or we don't close the bracket. We have to write one because three n divided by three n actually equals one. So we have our greatest common factor and then we're left with a binomial. Okay, next one. Greatest common factor, always write at the side. Okay, factors of five are one and five. Factors of 10 are 1, 10, 2, 5. And factors of 50, well, there's going to be a bunch of them. 1, 50, 2, 25, 3, 4, 5, and 10. Okay, I'm going to just stop there. We have this 5 in common. Okay, and when we have 3, when we have a trinomial, so 3 terms, we, we must choose a greatest common factor that's divisible by all of the terms. Okay, so all of these can divide by 5. Now, x squared, x, well, there's no x here. So essentially, what's here is x to the 0. What is the lowest, remember, the smallest exponent, 2, 1, or 0? It's 0. So we don't actually even have to put that because x to the 0 just cancels out. So let's put our greatest common factor in front, and now let's divide. 5x squared divided by 5 is x squared. 10x divided by 5 is, uh, let's go 2x. And 50x divided by 5, I get 10. Oh, sorry, 50 divided by 5, I get 10. Okay, so there is our factored form using common factoring. Okay, factor by grouping. So, when we do factor by grouping, what we do is we group two terms together that share a common factor. Okay, this is used when there are four terms. So what we do is we common factor these smaller expressions. And please note, if you have done this step right, then there should be a binomial common to each term. Okay, and you'll see what that means. Okay, common factor the binomial out. And then what we do, um, again, option uh, four is you can check your answer by expanding and simplifying. Okay, you don't have to do that on every one, but on maybe on tests or on a couple homework questions, just until you know that you have the uh, the idea down uh, and the pattern down, that's always a good idea. Okay, so factor by grouping. So there are four terms here. So what we're going to do is we're going to first bracket the first two terms and bracket the last two terms. Okay, so that's number one. Group two terms together that share a common factor. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to common factor the first bracket and we're going to common factor the second bracket. Okay, greatest common factor over here is going to be x squared. Okay, so we have x squared, x cubed. You take the lower one, three and one. If there's a coefficient of one, then the common factor is always just the one. Okay, so we're going to divide these first two terms by x squared. And we write the x squared in front of the bracket. And then we're left with x plus 3. Now the second two terms, 2x and 6, okay, the greatest common factor here is 2. Okay, the 6 doesn't have an x on it, so don't put the x. Um, but they're both divisible by 2. So we put the greatest common factor out front of the bracket. And we divide both of these by 2 we're left with x plus 3. Okay, so here's the note. If you've done this step right, what we have here is we have two terms, so this being the first one and this being the second one, okay, and they have a common binomial. So both of these have an x plus 3 in them. So x plus 3, x plus 3. So this time, our greatest common factor is x plus 3. So we bring the greatest common factor out, and then we write a bracket, and we fill in what's left over here. So when we divide these, we're left with an x squared, and when we divide these, we're left with a 2. Okay, so how we factor this polynomial 
is factor by grouping and you essentially common factor three times. Okay, we get x plus three, x squared uh, plus two. Okay, next one. So again, there are four terms here. So group the first two, group the last two. Okay, keep that negative side inside that bracket. Now the greatest common factor between 2x cubed and 4x squared is going to be 2x squared. And the greatest common factor here, a lot of people would put 1, but it's actually negative 1. Okay, so if this leading coefficient of like when we group these, if this one's negative, you have to pull it out. Okay, so let's divide by 2x squared. So what, let's write the 2x squared on the outside, and then what's left? We have x plus 2. Okay, and then we're going to divide both of these by the negative 1. Again, common factoring. So we have negative 1, bracket, and then now this is going to be x plus 2. Okay, when you divide by negative 1, it's called negating, and all you're doing is flipping every sign. So negative x becomes x, negative 2 becomes 2. Now again, this is one term, this is another term. So the common factor between these two is now x plus 2. And we put the greatest common factor in front, which is x plus 2, and those cancel to 2x plus 1, or sorry, 2x squared, and then we're left with negative 1. Okay, now we're going to factor simple trinomials. So people call this sum product or product sum. Okay, so here are the steps in factoring a trinomial in this form. So we have the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a equals 1. So essentially what happens here is the 1's not even written, and it has the x squared plus some number x plus some number. Okay, so I'm going to show decomposition which is one step and then it's factored by grouping okay so what we're going to do is we're going to find two numbers I'll scroll back up that add to b okay so this middle number it's an arrow and then multiply to ac so a in this case is one so just multiply to c and then what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite that middle term and remember when you flow your math down your paper, every single line should be equivalent. So all we're going to do is we're going to write an expression that's equivalent to that bx, but we're going to write it so it just looks a little bit differently. Okay? And then we're going to factor by grouping. So I'll show you that method, and then I'll show you product sum. So what two numbers multiply to negative 30 and add to negative 1. So what I do is I put those two numbers at the side of my paper and I write out the factors of 30. So 130, 215, 310, or 5, 5, 6. So it's definitely going to be 5 and 6. If they have to add to negative 1, the 6 is going to have the negative sign on it. So what we're going to do is we are going to break down this middle term, and instead of writing it as negative x, we're actually going to write it as plus 5x minus 6x, and then bring down that negative 30. See what we did here, this plus 5x minus 6x, this number didn't actually change. It's still negative x, so these two expressions are equivalent still. Okay, now all we do is factor by grouping. So, Let's group the first two terms and the last two terms. Okay, what's common between x squared and 5x? Well, it's x. So divide these two by x, and we're left with x on the outside, the greatest common factor, and then x squared divided by x, and then 5x divided by x, we get x plus 5. Now, what's common between negative 6x and negative 30? Remember, we must pull out that negative, so it's actually negative 6 because 30 is divisible by negative 6. Okay, so we divide these, we're left with x. We divide these, we're left with positive 5. 
Okay, these two are two, are two terms. The common factor is x plus 5. Now we could do x plus 5 as the greatest common factor. And then what's left over? x minus 6. Those cancel, we get x. Those cancel, we get negative 6. So I want to point this out. Product sum, okay? We... See, we have the two numbers, 5 and negative 6. Well, what do we notice here? Okay, the one bracket has a positive 5, the one bracket has a negative 6. So why don't we do a little bit of, um, of a shortcut where we go straight from the product and the sum and we put them straight into the brackets, okay? So, what two numbers multiply to 4 and add to 4? Okay, multiply to this number and add to this number. Okay, so write out the factors of 4. 1, 4, 2, and 2. Well, 2 plus 2 is going to give you this sum. So, our two factors, and we set it up like this, are x plus 2, x plus 2. Okay, and we can actually rewrite this as x plus 2 squared, and that's fully simplified. So going actually back to here, product sum method, what we do is we write these two sets of empty brackets, just like I did. And then in the, the first term in the bracket must be basically like your variable here. Okay, like what times what gives you x squared? Okay, so it's like the root of the first term. Then the second number numbers are going to be those two numbers that give you the product of that last number and then the sum of the middle number okay so add up to the coefficient b multiply to give you c so product sum as long as it's a coefficient of one product sum is the fastest way to do this okay special quadratics so I just want to highlight these. Uh, we have perfect square trinomials. This is when we have something such as like x plus 2 times x plus 2, just like the last one. What happens here is when we expand this, we get a squared plus 2ab plus 2b squared, okay? Or a squared minus 2ab plus 2b squared, okay? And we can recognize this because these expansions, so for example, the one on the previous page, we had x squared plus 4x plus 4. Okay, there are three terms. Yep, three terms. The first and the last term are perfect squares. What that means is that we can root this term and it would be x, that's really pretty. We can root this term and it can give us two and that's really pretty. So both of the first and the last terms are perfect squares, okay? Now the middle term here, and I'll go to red, the middle term here is gonna be two times the first term times the last term, which is four x. Okay? And how do we factor this? Well, it's root of the first term, sine of the middle term, root of the last term, and then that's squared. And that's why on the previous page, we actually ended up getting x plus 2 all squared. Okay, let's go over that. You don't have to memorize this one. This is just uh, to highlight like a shortcut in case you encounter this. But you can always use uh, decomposition or product sum for it. So this is not like pressing. Okay, example five, factor the following perfect square trinomials. So we look at this. Can we root x squared? Yep, we get x. Can we root nine? Yep, we get three. Now, that middle number, is it two times that x times that three? Yep, so we can factor this using perfect square trinomials. All that is, is that bracket here squared, root of the first term, which is x, the sine, which is plus, root of the last term, which is 3. OK, 
okay? Now, B, can we root 2x squared? No, but if we look at this, we can actually divide out that 2 first. And then that leaves us with x squared minus 8x plus 16. Now let's check. Can we root x squared? Yeah, we get x. Can we root 16? Yeah, we get 4. Okay, is this middle number 2 times the root of the first times the root of the last? Yeah, it's 8x. That means this is a perfect square trinomial. So in order to factor, let's put the bracket, let's put the square on it. Now the root of the first term is x, the root of the last term is 4, and we use this sign in here. Okay, don't forget this 2 comes down because we also factored out the 2 initially. Okay, and the last shortcut that we're going to cover is difference of squares. So how we recognize difference of squares is that there are going to be two terms, okay? And both terms are perfect squares. So again, what this means is that um, the first term is going to be able to be rooted, and the root of it is going to be very nice. This is b squared, okay? And then the second term is um, able to be rooted as well. Okay, and then the sign between the two terms is subtraction. So when we talk about the, a difference, we know that we're dealing with subtraction, okay? So overall, we can root the first term, root of a squared is just a, root of b squared is just b, and then that middle uh, sign is subtraction, okay? And the form that we can factor this in is we put two brackets, and we do first term minus, sorry, the root of the first term minus the root of the second term, then the root of the first term plus the root of the second term. Okay, so let's go ahead and factor the following using difference of squares. So let's recognize the difference of squares first. So x squared, we can root that, it becomes x. 9, we can root that, it becomes 3. And then there's a negative sign between them. Okay, so we have two terms, both are perfect squares, and then there's a subtraction sign. So we can go ahead and use difference of squares. We write two brackets, okay? So x is going to be the leading, and then one's going to be plus, one's going to be minus. Okay, this is minus plus, doesn't matter. And then 3. Okay, so we get x plus 3, x minus 3. Now for b, let's first factor out a 2. Okay, and the reason is because root 2 is not a perfect square, and root 200 is not a perfect square either. So that's not going to work. But now that we factored out the 2, and remember the 2 just comes down every single time we rewrite, okay? So now we have x squared minus 100. Well, we can root the first term, we get x. We can root the last term, we get 10. So let's write those factors. x plus 10, x minus 10. Now the additional page here is just the algorithm for factoring. So no matter what, number one, you want a common factor. In any, in anything that you get, you can common factor, okay? Then after you common factor everything that you can out, it depends on the number of terms, okay? Do you have two terms? If so, it's difference of squares, okay? And just remember, if it's not difference of squares, then, then you're done. You can't factor anymore, and that's okay too. Okay, so number of terms, if it has three terms, you're either going to do, if the leading coefficient here is one, you do product sum, okay? And if the leading coefficient is not one, you do decomposition. Okay, and then we have four terms. Four terms, we do factor by grouping. And remember, decomposition, we actually break down that BX term into two terms. Then we have four terms, so then it actually comes back up here to four terms.